Madam, gentlemen, we are gathered here for the reading of the will of the late Bernardo Onisante de Peruga. I, Bernardo Onisante de Peruga, of Naples, Liberia, London, and the world, being of sound mind, which I have proved by making more money than the lot of you, hereby bequeath to my only daughter, Epiphania, all my worldly goods. The conditions on which she may marry, she knows and has sworn to obey. If she does not, may she be punished. And now that my money has officially passed into somebody else's hands, I can be considered truly dead. The millionaire is dead. Long live the millionaires. Long live the millionaires. That's it.
What troubles you, Epitania? Nothing, nothing. Epifania. Epifania, you are lying to me. No, Papa. Honestly, no. Epifania, you have disobeyed me. But how, Papa? Why do you say such a thing? Epifania, why did you marry this man? He looked so exciting, so fascinating. Yes, and he had a wonderful backhand. But did he pass the test? What did you say? Did he pass the test? I thought that's what you said. That is exactly what I said. The test to which you had sworn to submit your future husband, hang him 500 pounds and marry him only if he succeeded in turning it into 15,000 pounds within three months. Did you do so? Well, I did as you told me to do. I gave him 500 pounds. You gave him 500 pounds worth of shares, and three months later, you bought these same shares back for 15,000 pounds. But they were worth it, Papa. But what did he do? Hmm? Nothing. Epifania, you have sworn a solemn oath, and you have cheated on it. But I should have known it. We Parergas must always have what we want. And we go to any length to get it. What shall I do? Tell me. What shall I do? Yes. You haven't changed, my daughter. You still over-dramatize everything. No, father. I'm not worthy of so honorable a death. Was there anything else, madam? Vanish. Very good, madam. <laughs> Day for a swim. Uh, I'm not swimming. I'm committing suicide. Do you hear me? I'm killing myself. Jolly, good luck to you. Uh. <laughs> And enclosed a cheque in full payment of your account for keeping Madame Peruga's husband under observation. A paragraph. I suppose only those who wait have a proper reverence for marriage. Paragraph. Letter continues. We are most grateful for the information that you have been able to place at our disposal, yours faithfully. The lady is not going to be very pleased about this. Of course I can go in. Surely she hasn't heard already. I'm going all right. Epifania, I beg your pardon. The water is far too cold. What for, Epifania? Drowning. The question. You must draw up my will immediately. Certainly, Epifania. Say that my husband's infidelity drove me to kill myself. Oh, you know then. Read this sickly sentimental drivel from his stupid little mistress. Here. 
Then the rest of the evidence is corroborated. Filed proceedings against him. Arranged an infallible way for me to commit suicide. Ah. <laughs> uh, here it is. What's, what's this? Uh, for the suicide. Tell the chemist that the cyanide is for a wasp's nest. Tartaric acid is harmless. Put the two separately in just enough water to dissolve them and you have pure hydrocyanic acid. One sip will kill you like a thunderbolt. It never fails. You take my death very coolly, Julius Hagamore. Oh, I'm used to it, my dear. My practice has always been amongst the wealthiest pillars of society. You mean so many of your clients are driven to despair that you keep a prescription for them? I do, and it's infallible. You're sure they all die painlessly and at once? No, they're all alive. What do you mean by giving me a prescription which is a fraud? On the contrary, it's a deadly poison. But they won't take it. I will, and I hope you'll be hanged for giving it to me. <laughs> Impossible, my dear. Since I'm acting as your solicitor and giving you the advice you asked me for, I'm going to do my best. In fact, I'll, uh, I'll charge your executors 20 guineas for this advice. You are disgusting, Sagamore. You make money out of the death of your clients. It is my profession. There'll be a great deal of business arising out of your death, Epiphania. So you expect me to kill myself merely to make money for you? Well, it was you that raised my expectations, my dear. Pig! <laughs> there, there, there. The prescription will cure everything. Damn your prescription. Look what I do with your prescription. Here. <laughs> I told you it was infallible. And now that you've blown off steam, suppose, my dear Epiphania, that you sit down and tell me all about your little problem. My heart is broken, and you, you call it blowing off steam. Well, what else would you call it? You're not a man. You're an Englishman. How could my father have entrusted his legal business to such a heartless blackguard? You may have put your finger on the very reason. Now, please, please sit down. Oh, Julius, Julius. How could I ever have done such a thing? Well, after all, Licks and Death, lit, first-class tennis player, boxing blue, oh, fine record. Yes. And unlike most handsome men, who he stripped so well. Please, Epiphania. Oh, I'm very susceptible to sex appeal. It has no legal bearing on the case. How could I make such a stupid mistake? Imagine this athlete would be a nard and lover. All his passion was in his fists. Our marriage has been a long succession of boxing matches. Really? Oh. And now the final blow. This stupid letter from this stupid woman. <laughs> ah, blast him! <gasps> ah. Oh, I want to see. I want to see this little nothing he prefers to me. I want to see her. I <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, you are strong. I am with you. <laughs> That's Jane wanting to borrow my home perm outfit again. She's going to be very disappointed. No, that knock anywhere. And it's not your home perm she's after. Yes? Was there something? <laughs> very suitable. Yes. A very suitable setting. For your sordid little affair. Now look here, Epiphania, you That's can't come right. in here. That's right. Strike me. Show your little mistress your great knockout punch. Let her see how you treat women. Coward. May I come in? Oh dear, we've only got three cups. Come in, Mr. Sagamore. Come in and see my husband's harem. I'm warning you, Epiphania. I... Aren't you going to introduce me to your wife, Alistair? Well, Epiphania, uh, this is my... Tell her that I have no wish to meet her. I think Alistair a better girl. It's not nice for us to fight over him to his face. Besides, he's worn out, poor darling. He hardly slept a wink all night. And how does she know that? You actually left me to spend the night in the arms of this Miss... Uh... Smith, Polly Smith. Very pleased to meet you. Polly Smith? It was quite innocent. Was he in your arms or was he not? Well, uh, yes, in a way. For a while, that is but not in the way you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what she means. He's a sexless fish. Alistair is not a fish. No, a jellyfish. Uh, one moment, Epiphania, please. I really must protest that the breakup of a marriage is no light matter. These two inferior people are very well suited to one another. Let us go, Sagamore. 
Don't be too upset about it. It's not your fault you're so marvellous, no one can live with you. Is this creature insulting me? If a nice, ordinary fellow like Alistair tries to live with someone marvellous, they just get completely eaten up. Are you trying to suggest that you can do something that I cannot do? Well, I can make Alistair happy, can't I? What about the elephant and the mouse, Sally? What about that? <laughs> just being very sick. Yes. <laughs> 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 is that the one? Is that the one where they're both taking a drink of water? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> it's a very good one. <laughs> See you in court. You're well rid of him, my dear. Julius, why do you think she can make a man happy and I can't? No, but it's quite simple, my dear. You require a very exceptional kind of man. Mm. Yes. Do you think I should have my nose cut? Hmm? Hmm? My nose cut? <laughs> no, I'm quite certain it's not surgery you need, my dear. Why don't you try Adrian Bland, hmm? Adrian Bland? I really feel I ought to come even more often. Uh, Miss Tonks, uh, Miss Tonks, try and work Mrs. Weatherby in a few additional sessions, will you? Well, it's very difficult, Doctor, but I'll do my best. Um, <coughs> goodbye. I'll see you out, Mrs. Weatherby. Oh. Hi, Adrian. Oh, sir, well, I'm delighted to see you. I don't you. think you've met Madame Peruga. How do you do? Fracker, well, this is indeed a privilege. Madame Peruga has one or two trifling problems which it might be possible for you to unravel for her. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. I wish to make a man happy. Uh, ah, yes. The female of our species can aspire to nothing higher. Will you come this way? The usual commission. They'll take 20% old boy. I don't propose to bicker. Oh, well, the usual then. Excellent. One small suggestion. It is most inadvisable from the point of view of the Praga estate that she should be too concerned with finding a husband. I quite understand. Uh, shall I undress? That will not be immediately necessary, but I would like you to lie down. Indeed. This is a more interesting approach. I want you to tell me first exactly what comes into your mind. Mm. Elephants? Elephants. Mice? Uh, mice? Mm. What about them? Well, they can't live together. Yeah, Muriel, I don't like this at all. What? These bills from Dr. Bland. I thought they were most moderate. That's what worries me. It's not at all like Adrian Bland to miss such a golden opportunity. I went for him with my fists on the first night of our honeymoon, with my fists. Oh, he was so cold. He was obviously quite unable to appreciate you. You're well rid of him. I want to get rid of myself. I want to punish yes. myself. I should be punished for marrying a buck rabbit. My dear Madame Peraga, there's no need to feel guilt because you are sexually susceptible. You are so sympathetic, Dr. Bland. So understanding. Normally, my dear madam, it is my profession to be, but with you it is a pleasure. You find it interesting to hear me talk about myself? To me, madam, you are the most interesting woman in the world. Tell me more. Have I told you about my father? Tell me again. My father made me feel I was a princess. Offering any man my hand and fortune, if... Uh, if what? If he could only pass a simple test. Then I spoiled it all by falling in love. You must never blame yourself for that. Just because his tennis was outstanding, and I was so excited by physical contact with him. After all, Adrian, I am made of flesh and blood. Yes, you are. You certainly are. Mm, you don't know what it feels like to be in the arms of a man and know that you could buy him up 20 times over and never miss the price. If the man
man isn't proud, what difference does it make? Splendid, splendid. I'm certainly very glad to hear that you're, you're getting on so well with the lady. You may have to congratulate me. Congratulate you? Uh, yes, congratulate me, and that pretty soon. What? You mean to say that you've already got rid of her Oedipus complex, her father fixation, whatever you call it? Oh, uh, no, no, not really, not yet. No. Fellow, you haven't got a chance. I mean, not until you've replaced her father's image with your own, surely, am I right? Yes, yes, of course you are. <laughs> Perfectly Freudian. Perfectly Freudian, oh. Sagamore. Yes, I must break down her dependency upon this nostalgia for a deceased miserly old billionaire. Well, I should have thought that would be easy for you. Hmm? Oh, well, now on no holes barred, eh, Adrian? No holes barred, you can rely on me. <laughs> Good luck. Well, I hope that's put him out of the running. You left your nose drops behind last night, Julius. Hmm? Did I? You make me forget almost everything, Muriel. Come here back, Tina. Money's power. Money's security. Money's freedom. Money, my dear Epifania, is nothing but a vulgar bore. Delicious. Have a few more, lady. You know you love my works. No, thank you. Pay for my works, will you, Adrian? My father never spent more than ten shillings a day on himself. I think it's high time, Epifania, that you realize there was something just a little wrong with your sense of values. Now listen, oh. throughout your analysis... You like it? <laughs> throughout your analysis... Epifania, yes? you must listen to me. Now, throughout your analysis, you've harped on nothing but your money and your father. Well, what else have I in my life? Nothing. You have nothing else, because money and your father bulk so large, they leave no room. I'm glad. I wish for nothing else. But that's not true. When you first came to me, you asked me a simple question. Why am I unable to make a man happy? Yes? You still have not answered me. Well, now I'm going to. You'll never be happy, you'll never be able to love, until you realize what a crushing, dreary, money-grubbing old bore your father was. Oh. What did you say? I'll repeat it. You are suffering from a most acute father fixation upon a man who must have been, without any doubt at all, the most appalling bore who ever plagued humanity. I'm sorry to spoil your illusions, but I'm afraid it's necessary. Adrian? Yes? Come here, Adrian. Come closer, Adrian. Thanks for calling my father a bore. Epiphania, what on earth do you think you're doing? And that's... <sighs> for saying my father was dreary. Help! 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 Ah, ah, ah. Good afternoon, I am a doctor. Hello. Oh, it's you again, the man who lets people drown. I hear a great disturbance. I hasten to ascertain the cause. You appear to be in agitated condition. Can I help you? Oh, yes, you can. Oh. Uh, where are you going? Uh, there is a man drowning down Yes, there. where is he? No. But no one has ever disobeyed me. Wait, you must attend to me. This is the second time you have left me to die. On neither occasion was there a serious possibility of it, madam. But. But you don't seem to understand. I'm ill and a very rich woman. Well, in that case, you'll have no difficulty in finding an English doctor to send you bills. But, but I'm liable to die at any moment. Oh, indeed, we all are, madam. It is our common destiny. Good afternoon, you. Good afternoon. Hmm. Help me, somebody. My love for you is ever true. Him bim bum bim bum biddle boo. And when I see. Oh, hello. You've been having a little swim with your friend, have you? Well, not exactly, no. This lady is somewhat wet. <laughs> and uh, uh, we are wondering if it is possible to use the amenities of your excellent establishment. Yeah, well, go on then. I tell you, 
I'm dying, Doctor. You have a natural affinity for water, but oh. you're still not dying. No, oh. no. Please, go forward in here. A little privacy here. Yes, move me. Please, I pardon me. Over sorry. there? Yes, here yeah. will do beautifully. All right. Yes. Uh, yeah, go and help yourselves. Here, go. Put it, put it on. Mm. It so happens you've come at a most interesting point, you have. Now, I yes. think you'll be very interested in Good. this. Listen, I've prepared today yes. the smoking mixture that'll give them kippers, if my experiments are successful, yes. the quality and flavour of the best Drugs smoked doctor. salmon. Most interesting. Oh, thank <laughs> After you. all, yes. Yes. why shouldn't the workers enjoy from the humble kipper what the fleet snobs pay premium prices for it, the Savoy and Brits? But you're absolutely eh? right, my dear fellow. Absolutely right. I could not agree. Oh, yeah. thank What's you. That? Thank you. Mm. Come here. Uh, Wait. Have a smell. Go on. Beautiful smell. Hey. Beautiful. What about it? Beautiful <laughs> smell. Now, here's the crafty pick up. Yes. Listen. One more. To one part cherry wood sawdust, mm -hmm. I add two parts oak, yes. one elm, okay. and half a plum. Uh, Just half a plum. No more. No more than half a plum. Ah! Uh, Are you in great pain, madam? Oh. But I think I will make an examination. Oh, you're welcome, mate. You're welcome. There's no secrets between men of science. I'll show you the whole process. Stand up, please. Huh? Stand up, please. Yes. Oh, I can't. Where is the pen? Here, doctor, my shoulder. Hmm? Yeah, she'll yes. have to put more wood on the fire now. Oh. See all the smoke will go up to the kippers. They'll be oh. dancing, they will. Smoke salmon, they'll be. Yes, smoke salmon. Nothing whatever the matter with it, nothing whatever at all. Well, it's my shoulder, not yours. Well, no, but I am not disputing the ownership of the shoulder. All I am saying is that you know nothing about the machine that your soul inhabits, whereas I am a skilled mechanic and I understand. Oh, maybe it's my back. Yes, I'm sure it's my back. Maybe it is, yes. yes. Lie down, please. Hmm? Lie down. Lie down. Here. Thank you. Oh, here. Here. Uh, this is where it is hurting yeah. you. Oh, no, 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 everywhere. Yes, I see, yes. Yeah. This is quite, quite beautiful. Mm. Mm. What an entirely perfect trapezius you have here. Quite gratifying, quite gratifying. Mm. I'm glad you approved something about me. I don't think I've seen such perfection as this since I performed mm. last February an autopsy on a drowned navvy. Navvy? Yes, six feet four in height. He was a fine, fine fellow, a man. Fine fellow, fine. Yes, he was. Well, I, I, I don't think that this back of yours would be injured by anything, madam. It is an excellent back, quite excellent. I am ill. Hey, hey, I'll cap. It's beginning to go now. All right, I Watch and look at my tongue. My tongue. All right. Yes? Show me your tongue. Nothing wrong with it. Hmm? Hmm? Put it away, please. <laughs> Or felt my pulse. Well, I will, but it will prove only what is already obvious, that you are alive and well. However, I will. Yes, you will live. Yes? Yes. Most probably forever. Uh, then what's the matter with me? Oh, absolutely nothing. nothing. Except, of course, that you are simulating. Why? Do you wish to make yourself interesting? Mm. I am interesting. Anatomically, you are beyond question. And uh, the pulse is the most moving and unusual phenomenon. But are you interesting in any other way? I'm the most interesting woman in the world. For I'm the richest. Epifania ogni santi di Pererga. Aristocrat of Italy, I presume. Even more aristocratic. I am of the aristocracy of money. Ah, well, uh, that is a disease for which I do not prescribe. Uh, the only known cure is a revolution. A revolution in Kiprin, that's what it is. That is what it is. But the mortality rate is high. And sometimes, if it is the wrong sort of revolution, it intensifies the disease. Oh, will you not try to cure me? Madam, your sickness is beyond the reach of my skill. Besides, this is my day for spiritual exercise, and I do know where. Oh. Please reconsider. 
No, 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 definitely not, no. You see, at such times, I try to forget who I am and where I am. And I sink down deep into my soul. Carry me down with you. It is, as the wise men put it, an intermediary stage between being and non-being. Teach me not to be. Madam, mm. you know that you have seriously interrupted my thoughts. And you're mine. And now I will have to begin afresh. Goodbye, madam. But you must do something for me. Madam, I cannot. No, no, no. no. I am only Dr. Ahmed Al Kabir. That is all I am. And I can do nothing for you, madam. Please. Goodbye. Oh, wait. 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 Oh, never mind, love. Here. Have a smell of this. He's the same color. Purchase will be difficult, madam, because much of the property is mortgaged. Buy up all mortgages in the district. Buy up all mortgages in the district. Buy up all mortgages in the district. All mortgages bought up, madam. Foreclose wherever possible. Foreclose wherever possible. Foreclose wherever possible. All mortgages foreclosed, madam. Take over all trading companies and liquidate. Take over all trading companies and liquidate. Take over and liquidate. Take over all trading companies and liquidate. All trading companies taken over and liquidated, madam. Mm -hmm. uh, would there be any difficulty with lighter men and other workers using the walls in the district? There is some suggestion that their unions may object. Arrange meetings with the leaders of the unions in question. Paul Jack Spindle, Show me the ground plan of the area. What's that? That is what I wanted to explain, madam. Well, explain. That is Dr. Kabir's clinic. Is that not ours? Dr. Kabir is the sole representative of the Calcutta Trust, which owns and supports the clinic. The wretched man is unapproachable on the subject of the sale. I see. Call Calcutta immediately. Call Calcutta immediately. Immediately. Calcutta. Call Calcutta. Let me. Let me. Doctor? Hmm? Hello. She's not my patient. Get dressed, please. You're rude and insufferable. But you inspire confidence as a doctor. Examine me thoroughly. Madam, if I examined all the ladies in whom I inspire confidence, I should be exhausted within one week. Oh, then reserve yourself exclusively for me? I have to reserve myself for the poor and useful people. Now, will you kindly get dressed? Why can't I be your patient? Because there is a great deal to be done in this world without attending any rich imaginary invalid. I'm not any rich imaginary invalid. I am a landlord. <laughs> then you indeed have a grave sickness. Really? Oh, 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 what is it then? Tell me all about it. What is it then? Yes. What is it then? What the devil do you mean, what is it then? You come stalking in here as if you are God's gift to hospitals, telling me to reserve myself entirely for you. I can't disregard the meaning of anything but property. Oh! I not you. I'm sorry. Here. Here. Put this on. Now, please. 
I think you are a pig. You think I'm a pig, do you? Yes. Well, may I tell you, madam, there is not one particle of that particular animal in my constitution. Not one particle. Not one little particle. I'll make this. Oh. Please understand what am I doing? Thank you. Get this lady's car, please. No, 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 it has gone around the block. It will have returned already. This is a very small block. Understand that, please. Uh, I happen to own it. Yes, doctor. All of it. Including your clinic. I am the owner of all this. Are you indeed, madam? Of all this. But can you cure it? I can. And I will. <laughs> Your work will be seriously reduced, Doctor. It will. It will. You may become obsolete. Well, I hope so. It would mean the world was healthy. Will you go back to India? Perhaps. India resists organization. So I hope you'll come to our opening tomorrow. Thank you, but I think not. Oh, but you must see my machines. My, my equipment is superb. At least you will come and look. Come now. No, no, I, I think not. I, I must try to stifle my envy with sleep. Oh, but there are, uh, there are still a few points on, uh, on local conditions. And I need your advice. I am a little tired, you know, madam. Surely you wouldn't refuse to give us the benefit of your knowledge? All right. Thank you. Santi di Pererga. <laughs> hmm. It is an amazing irony that he who made the people sick for the sake of money should have his memory perpetuated by having his money spent, making them well again. <laughs> uh, you see, Doctor, we can deal with 1,000 outpatients per day, and we have 500 beds. Come. It will be of great benefit to the people. I'm most glad, most glad. People must be planned into health, doctor. Yes, yes. That is certainly better than planning them into sickness, though I would prefer they were left unplanned. Nevertheless, it is good, good. Each patient is filed and electronically... <laughs> ...coded. Try also to remember their names. Excellent equipment, isn't it, Doctor? Yes, yes. Yes, excellent, excellent. I, uh, I trust you have no objection if I, uh... Oh, not at all, please. Fiddle with a few things. Such a well-equipped hospital. <laughs> I'm glad you find it so. Yes. So really, everything is fine, very fine. I, I, I must congratulate you. I hear we have all that you could ever need for your work. And, uh... We will do more good here than you will in that hovel of yours. Hmm, Doctor? 
Yes, well, it is undeniable that my means are most inadequate. Put it away, please. Uh, through here, I have a few uh, little novelties. Hmm? Well, where is that? Where is that? I think you could stand here. Me? Yes. Uh, where? Here. Over oh, there? Yes. yes. Behind there. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> it's all right. I, I am a doctor, madam. You are a psychological curiosity, madam. So, I am of some interest to you. Of some medical interest, yes. Wait. I have a proposition for you. I want you to take over the Parerga Clinic. Me? Yes. My father always maintained that socialists made perfect employees. Madam, I, I cannot. Oh, why not? Here's the power you long for. Why will you not accept it? Because, you see, power. Power must come from within. Otherwise, it destroys, you see. It merely destroys. The power I offer you is, is the power to make people well. So if I accept, all this here will belong to me. It will. Or will I belong to it? Oh, you care only for yourself. Madam, if I do not care for myself, how will I be able to care for others? If I'm not free myself, how can I make others Dr. free? Dr. Kabir! Dr. Kabir! What is it, son? My mother is Doctor. May I This boy's mother is very ill. I must go to her at once. You will excuse me. I quite understand. Yes. What, what is it? Hmm? Oh, my mistress is very ill. You must come at once. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, wait, wait there. Wait there. I'll be done. Right. You see, your mistress speaks very little English. Very little. I see. Tell me, when did... मेरा नाम डॉक्टर कबीर है। कैसी तबीयत है आपकी बेगम साहब? कैसी तबीयत है आपकी बेगम साहब? तकलीफ बहुत है बेगम साहब। तकलीफ बहुत है। That sound I know. It reminds me of Kipper. What is the meaning of this trick, please? 
When I want something, I will use any trick to get it. This applies to anything you want? Everything, anything. Everything and anything is nothing. Then you two are nothing. Thank you. You want the sun, the moon, the stars. You cannot get them. No, 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 no. I want only what I can get. I see. Well, I am glad to find that you are fit and therefore not in need of my assistance. Good evening. I should say good morning. It must be nearly 4.30 a.m. Good morning. Good morning. Wait! What Wait. is it? Shall we dance? Shall we dance? Yes. What on earth are you talking about, shall we dance? Dance in my pajamas? It's much cosier. Let's dance. Yes, but we, 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 we have no music. Who needs music? Yes, but look, really, I've never had anything like this. Now, never be quiet and listen to me. Happen. Tell me something. What do you want to be told? Is there nothing one can get with money, except more money? Well, uh, one can get uh, most men, yes. But I don't want the men I can buy. Yet it does not occur to you that those you cannot buy may not want you. Yes, I think that you've got enormous self-confidence, madam. Yes. Yes. And what is more, I'm standing on your dress. What is more, I think you are apparently sexless. How dare you? How dare you say that I am sexless? Really? Well. Oh. I mean, there is no mystery, no separateness, no sacredness about men to you. You talk as if you're a man. A man? Yes. Are you married? To science. Science is impotent without money. Take another wife. Science is my bride. I wouldn't be jealous of her. Does the question of competition arise? It does. I want to marry you. I see. Well, answer me. Not so simple to answer. I want you. I think that you have wanted many toys. And when they were given to you, uh, you have tossed them aside without even unwrapping them. No, no. I really need you. I find it most difficult to refuse those who need. Then don't refuse. But I, I, I must, I have to use it. But why? Oh, but, well, because, because of my mother. Your mother? Yes, my mother. I, uh, my mother, I, I have a, a mother fixation. Oh, a mother fixation. Yes, here's, oh, sorry. What was your mother? A woman. Uh, of course she was a woman. She was a seamstress, a widow. And would she have found any great objection to your marrying a millionaire? Oh, yes, she would. Definitely she would. You see, I, I made a solemn, thank you, promise to her uh, on her deathbed. May I? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, she made me swear to her mm -hmm. that if ever a woman wanted to marry me, and I felt Tempted. And you do, you do. One moment, please. If everyone wanted to marry me, and I felt tempted. You do, you do. Look, would, you, would you please allow me to just say what I'm trying to say? All right. That is all. If everyone wanted to marry me, and I felt tempted, I would hand to that woman 500 rupees. And then I would say to her, unless that she could go out into the world, alone and unneeded, with nothing but that and the clothes she stood in, and earn her living for a period of three months, then I must never speak to her again. And uh, if she stood the test? Then I would have to marry her, even if she were the ugliest devil on earth. Oh, the most beautiful. Oh, the most beautiful, yes. Thank you. It's all right. You know that this incense you have got is very strong. Yes. Oh, it is a We'll have to go because people are waiting for me. It is mm, 4.30, maybe, I don't know. People are waiting everywhere. <laughs> 
fag. People with hurt hair, you know. Where? You must open my clinic, you understand. And I must open mine. <laughs> Would you please go to your appropriate desk? A to E on your left. Name of mother, name of father, father's occupation, mother's occupation, name, age, name of father, name of mother, father's occupation, mother's occupation, name, age, name of father, name of mother, father's occupation, mother's occupation, name, age, name, age, age, sex. What? Yeah, I've had enough. Any. And I've had enough, so have I. Yes, and I'm going back to Dr. Kabir. He knows, he's right, he knows. Bloody liberty asking me my sex. Why should I tell them? Or you? Bye-bye. No, no, thank you very much. Yes. I think we're wasting our time giving him embrocation. Keeps on drinking it. Fortunately, we are very rich in embrocation. Will there be anything else, Doctor? Uh, no, no, thank you, no. Well, good night, Doctor. Good night, nurse. Doctor. Hmm? It's that lady again. What? The one with the clinic. What? Oh, oh dear. Uh, doctor? Doctor? <laughs> yes. Doctor? Yes. Oh. I've decided to accept the test. Uh, yes. Uh, what test was that, dear lady? Oh, your mother's. My mother's, mm -hmm. yes. I, uh, she was a very wise woman, my mother. I have decided to accept her challenge. You see, she had something in common with my father. He also left a test for a husband worthy of me. Oh, so uh, the uh, husband is to be tested too? Yes. Ah, yes. Well, no, that is something that never occurred to me or my mother. I am to give the man in question 500 pounds, and in three months, he has to increase it into 15,000. 15,000? Oh, well, that is a lot of money. A lot of money. Mm. Well, I, I can tell you one thing for sure, that if, if I were the man in question... You are the man in question. Please, just allow me to say what I want to say. Yes, yes. If I were the man in question, ah, at the end of three months, I would not have one penny left. Uh, so you consider yourself beaten before you start? Oh, yes, completely, hopelessly. So we are both beaten? Yes, we're both... Uh, you do not know what homeless poverty is. I do not know what the profit motive means, so... Uh... How much is 500 rupees? you asking me how much is that? Yes, I'm asking you how much is 500 rupees? Well, um... Uh... Well, I, I would think that uh, the rate of exchange contemplated by my mother, it is probably about 35 shillings. Well, hand it over. What? Yes. Uh... Ah, well, you see, uh, my mother forgot to provide for such a thing as that. I, I haven't got 35 shillings. Why, well, it doesn't matter. You can owe it to me. Hmm? I just happen to have 500 pounds with me. How strange. Yes, how strange. Dear lady, look, please, may I tell you, I've no head for money. But I... in that case, you're running no risk if you accept my father's test, are you? I... <coughs> um, I, I, um, but, uh, dear lady... I don't want to do a test. What? Most great and glorious. Is this another of that terrible jokes? Hmm? This? What did I... Don't do this to me, please. Please, not to me. Hmm? Oh, mummy, mummy. Epiphania, my dear child. Now, please, please listen and try to concentrate. What I really want to point out is that you owe a... You owe a duty to the estate. And the estate involves millions of money. Very well, may I remind you? No, darling, I don't think this will do. Thank you very much. See this one. Epiphania, may I remind you that you also have a, have a duty to your father's memory. Oh, but my father would have approved. You like it? <laughs> you know how he started with 20 lira. And a compromising letter from his employer's wife. I'm merely repeating history. You don't intend to use blackmail, I trust? Yes, I shall use whatever is necessary. 35 shillings, the clothes I stand up in, and yes, 
if I have to, blackmail. See you in three months' time, Sagamore. Epifania, is a penniless Indian doctor really worth all this? I'm not proving his worth, but my own. Vanish, please. Thank you. You get out! I don't show your face again! I want only girls who work! Work? I call it slavery! Don't you come back! I can get girls! Plenty of good girls! Good girls! You wouldn't know what to do with a good girl! Hey, you! You! Yeah. Are you the manager of this yes. place? Yes, I am. Good. And who are you? You need a girl? I need a job. You need a job? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't look like a girl who needs a job. I do. Good. Good. All right. Well, you just come to my office. And we talk it over, nice and fine. Mm -hmm. Why do you stop work? Work, work, all of you. <laughs> that works not for you, not for those pretty hands. Maybe uh, I could fix up something more. Ah, uh, Maria, you come at the right moment. So I see. My wife always comes at the right moment. What does she want? Work. With a hat like that, she don't want the work we can offer. She's not going to work with her hat, Maria. Can you cut tagliatelle? Certainly she can. Can't you? No. Uh, but spaghetti, at least uh, you can make. No, no. Listen, we are making pasta for all Italians in London. What other work do you think you can do here? Then you listen to me. You're employing more girls here than the law permits. She's an inspector. You bloody old fool. She's an inspector. Oh, no. I'm not an inspector. But in there, there is a gas engine. That makes you a workshop. So? So, I am a workshop? Hmm. I can have you closed down just like that. Oh, no. You can do that to me. Thirty years ago, I come to London. I work, I work. I own shop, I own children. I own wife. You can't take that from me. Okay. Ah. How much do you want? I don't want money. I want work. But what work can you do? Brain work, managing, planning, that's what. What we need? Managing, planning, brains. Every day Benito comes with his lorry, he pays for what we make. He delivers the wholesalers, it's simple. Simple? Why don't you deal directly with the wholesalers? How do I know as a wholesaler? Yes, how? That's where I come in. I'll arrange it and I'll take 50% of the extra profit I make for you. Yes, but... How can we lose? We can lose. The intelligent capitalist need never lose. Now, let me see the production figures for the last month. Come on, come on. Well, you see, there's no need to get in a state about it. Uh, you do not drink this. You rub it in. Now, that's clear, isn't it? Hmm? Mm. Every night. Because, you see, I mean, if you are to drink it, uh, you would not have any left to rub in. <laughs> you understand that, don't you? <laughs> good, good. Here, here. This says, please take one as you leave. Go on. No, thank you, Doctor. Good night, nurse. Good night. You see, he did not take one. I'm afraid he didn't, Doctor. Why is it that people will not take what is given to them? Perhaps they feel you've given them enough already. I tell you, that woman, that woman is a menace to humanity. So, what do you say? What do I say? It's not efficient, it must go. But my family always beat the door this way. Uh, that's why your family were always poor. There's a machine to do this kind of work. But they like girls better than machines. Yes, I know you do, Joe. We'll get a machine. Yes, we get a machine. How is Professor?
production this week. Should be up another 16%. Good, good. Any complaints from the workers? Complaints? I should think not. With time and a half overtime, a canteen, a recreation room, no fingers. I'll tell you something. These girls ain't gonna develop the character that we did when we was girls. You see, Joe? The workers are satisfied. We pay them the union's minimum, and our profits increase. That's true. That is very true. And you, Joe, you have a fine house now. I do. And your children, they go to a good school. That's true. And instead of being a hated sweatshop owner, you are now a respectable employer of labor. Yes, so I am. So why do you look so sad? I don't enjoy it like I used to. What do you mean? No more adventure, no more danger, no more pleasure. Oh, come on, Joe. If we carry on like this, you'll be able to retire soon, back to Naples. Hmm? Yes. I get myself a vineyard. I just sit and think, and think and sit. <sighs> and sit and think. Money? What are you selling? I'm not selling anything. I'm giving money away. You want some? Yes. <laughs> Get your money here. Don't you want it? You see my joke? The output of 20 girls and after the capital expenditure, only a few shillings a week in electricity. Very good, very good. In three months, my joke, the operation is completed. First, we let the workers unionize, give them higher rates, and they produce more. Then we take over the means of distribution and cut out the middleman. Finally, on the increased profits that we make, we install machines and replace the workers. You see? Simple. Mm. Oh, how beautiful industry is. Mm. Signore Pifani. Signore Pifani. Mm -hmm. I would like to sell out my interest. <laughs> you want to go back to Naples, eh, Joe? No, but will you buy my interest? Of course, of course. It will be a lot of money for you, Joe. But if you don't go back to Naples, what will you do? I tell you, I find myself a little basement somewhere in London. I start a nice little sweatshop. Some are simply not made for leadership and progress. You are right, but you know, I like to work with people, not machines. In a sweatshop is nice. You have plenty of girls around you. Arguments, trouble. <laughs> it is nice. You don't mind, Signor Epifania? Me? Oh, no, no. Do as you wish. I've completed my task. As I explained to you from the outset, my dear lady, there is no reasonable possibility whatsoever of me succeeding in any commercial venture of any kind. I want to make that quite clear from the beginning. So please, un I, I don't want to argue, but besides, the time for the test has elapsed. You see, it's elapsed. And the money. Here is your money. Take it away. Thank you very much for lending it to me, but I don't want it. Yes. That is, that is what I shall say to her. Yes, after all, she's not dealing with nobody. She is dealing with somebody. Hmm. Ah, the Institute of Scientific Learning. Did you hear that? The Institute of Scientific Learning requests the pleasure in the company, the pleasure of the company of Dr. Musa Ahmed Al-Kabir. MD Calcutta, PhD Delhi, MRCS Reading, MCH Swanage, BA Cantab, failed. At its annual dinner to be held at Romano's. You see, my dear lady, that is who you are dealing with. You are dealing with a man who goes to Romano's for annual dinners. May I say that it is my firm Nay, 
my unalterable conviction that the day will come when the good shall rule the strong, when learning shall rule over ignorance, and when men of science will hold sway over princes and millionaires. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have some more brandy. No, no, look, I've had more than I should, and, and believe me, I shouldn't have any, so I... Look, son, you're, you're a grown man now. You're no longer a shy young student. If you want to be a man, drink club like a man. Yes, well, it's all your fault, then. Yeah. I'll drink and it blame you. Did you hear what he said? The good shall rule the strong. Idiocy. More likely the lamb shall eat the lion. Nevertheless. It is a good sentiment. Sentiment is all it is. Men of science hold sway over millionaires. Tough and nonsense. Professor, do you think it is possible for a man of learning to oppose the wishes of a millionaire? Are you damn fool if he does? Look at me. A life devoted to pain, killing, and other damn thing in the back. Now, if I had devoted my ingenuity to devising a more efficient method for exterminating mankind, I'd be rich and revered. <laughs> Drink up, son. Drink up. This is his brandy. Might as well make the best of it before the mean old goat notices. Hey, look. A fortune made out of removing unnecessary organs from unnecessary wealthy women. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Professor, I think that it is not impossible that a man of learning could, should, and what is more, will do definitely. That is, that is, um, that is what I think. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the millionaires. Yeah. But, uh, I am safe. I am safe. Sure. Because, you want to know? My mother is looking after me. Let's drink up and get out of here. I've had enough clapped up till the same time next year. To princes and millionaires. Nevertheless, you know, she is very beautiful. And the sun comes up like thunder and shines across the bay. Oh, the road to man. I'm so glad that I confided in you, Professor. So mm. glad, so glad I confided in you. You're a good boy. You've nothing to be afraid of. All you have to do is to hand me over the money, and I'll make sure it's put to no good use whatsoever. Why, why, why are you so good to me, Professor? <sighs> That's all. Oh, don't get rough just a minute. Oh, that is her. That we must hide. Look, all you have to do is to give me hide. the money. That's... Hide, hide. That, that is the millionaires. <gasps> She's here, the millionaires. Oh, that's her. That's her. That's her. Well, she can't frighten me. I'll take on any millionaire. No, 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 we must go in the back way. <laughs> millionaires. Oh, oh dear, that was a close shave. <laughs> <laughs> now, my boy, the money, where is it? Science is waiting. Her throat is dry. Science's throat is dry. I haven't had brandy like that in 20 years. Here it is. Good. And, 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 and may I say yeah. that I am proud that I've been able to contribute to your research. Yeah, and I'm proud, proud to. To think, just to think that, that I unwillingly would have been the instrument of bringing to bear the cure for the common cold. Uh, Why? 
What? Three pounds a bottle. That'll give me about 150 bottles. You see, to, to be of some benefit to mankind is all that I ask. That is all I'm asking. 150 bottles, you know. That should see me out. I'm 76, you know. Uh, my dear old friend and teacher. You'll live forever. You know. God bless you. You will, you will. I hope so. I hope so. You will. Lovely brown man. I haven't tasted any like in the 20 years. Live forever. 150. 160 bucks. 160. Goodbye, my son. Goodbye and God bless you. You just drop your anchor there. I'll find my way home. I wrote a man the lay where the flying fishes play on the wall and the flesh on the for you. your father will too. I've done all that your mother wanted and more. You mean that you've actually attempted this impossible test? Oh yes. I can show you an accountant's certificate to prove that I have. It's all right. I'll take your word for it. You are a remarkable woman. I take the world as I find it and I know how to use it. To use it, yes. But the wrath of God shall overtake those who leave this world no better than they found it. But the evidence suggests that he loves those who make money. Riches are a curse. And also, poverty is a curse. And is this... Whatever it is I feel for you, is that also a curse? This talk is idle. You have fulfilled the uh, condition imposed by my mother, but I, I have not fulfilled the condition imposed by your father. Oh, but there is still time. I, I can show you how to turn it into 15,000 pounds before dawn. Stock exchanges in other capitals are already to work. We, we have no problem. But we have. Yeah, we have. But not if you want to pass the test. And you do. My desires do not come into this. The money has gone. Oh, no. You can't ever spend it all. Let me have whatever you have left and I will make it work for you. It is all gone. But do you leave on nothing? There must be some of it left. No. No. There is not a penny. I gave it all away. You gave it away? All of it. You gave away the chance to have me. Now it is you who are wrong. 
You are too small to accept a free gift. Free gift? Epiphania, on your Santa de Praga of Naples, Liberia, London, and the world, being of sound mind, which I can prove by making more money than the lot of you, hereby bequeath all my worldly goods to the order of Epiphania. What is this order of Epiphania? Insofar as I understand it, it is an exclusively feminine community, open to all women who wish to exchange a life of conflict with the male species, for, for one of contemplation. Most unhealthy. Madame Perga will retire to a monastery in Tibet. There, surrounded by women of, I beg your pardon, ladies of the order, she will spend the rest of her life attempting to contact the infinite by... by sinking deep within herself. The monks are at this moment being evicted. Gentlemen, I have done all I can to urge Madame Perga to reconsider her decision, but she has vowed. She has vowed that after this day's midnight, she will hold no communication with any living man. Silence! Before you gentlemen are relieved of your directorships, I wish to thank you formally. There will be a reception this evening. You will all attend. That is all I have to say. Epiphania. Yes? How can you throw all these innocent people out of work? Think of the hardship you will impose on these helpless directors. How can they make a living now? Let each be given 35 shillings and the clothes he stands up in. <laughs> I think I shall look for another job, Julius. What? Don't be hasty, Muriel. Muriel, what did the detective's report say? She makes any excuse to see the Indian doctor. Look, Julius, I've waited eight years. The Indian doctor. The Indian doctor. We could handle him. Yes, I think he'd be the perfect husband for Madame Perga. But the report makes it quite clear that he's failed the test. Huh? Oh, why did I ever persuade the old man to put in that stupid condition? Goodbye, Julius. Uh, M M Muriel. Muriel. Give me till midnight. Well... Till midnight then, Julius. You are Dr. Kabir? Yes, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, what can I do for you? <laughs> I'm told that you are something of a saint. The drunken old man that wrote these papers is one, but not I. But you devote yourself to the poor, you, you work for the good of man, for nothing, you live alone, turning your back on all women. <laughs> Oh, yes, I think you are the saint I'm looking for. Well, uh, at all events, I have no wife. It is my duty to acquaint you with certain details in the will of one Bernardo Onyesante de Peruga. Sir, would you please spare me any more of the post-mortem complications of that dreadful man? But I have no alternative but to plague you, sir. You have gained the unique distinction of rejecting the richest woman in the world, and thereby also gained, under the Paraga will, a considerable fortune. I am utterly sick and tired. I am utterly sick and tired of being the, the unconsidered object of the, the caprices of the Paraga family, do you hear? But, my dear sir, I have to tell you that the 28 associated companies of Paraga patent medicines now pass entirely under your control. Confound you, sir. Blast you and your monstrous, devilish dead employer with you, do you hear me? Blast you, sir. Do you know that I would rather 
I would rather sell the contents of these papers than I would accept such a sickening, such a sickening inheritance as a, a patent medicine monopoly. That, too, can be arranged. Well, sir, I do not intend to accept. I will tell Madame Perega that she can give this absurd inheritance of hers to any charity she pleases. Come then, sir, and tell her. Oh, yes, sir, I will tell her. I will tell her tomorrow. If you leave it till tomorrow, there will be the most tragic consequences for all of us. Tragic? For all of us. What do you mean? I mean, sir, that she has vowed to quit the world at midnight. You don't mean... Oh, yes, I do. Oh, that violent, self-destructive woman. I must go to her immediately. Exactly. I will go now to take my final leave of the world. It is almost midnight. and I think we'll all be safely provided for. Now, where's Corelli? Oh, Corelli. Uh, Corelli, we're, uh, we're buying these patents in at 30,000. Common cold cure. Cancer antivirus. Looks like a bargain. Yes, well, will you make out a check for 15,000 to Dr. Kabir? K-A-B-I-R. Yes, Mr. Sagamore. And the remaining 15,000 to you, I suppose. No, 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 to Miss Muriel Pilkington. Pilkington? P-I-L-K-I-N-G-T-O-N. Epifania, Epifania, please don't jump. I'm not jumping. Then what are you doing perched up there? I'm sinking deep down. Oh, everyone, oh, no, don't jump. Come down from there. Oh, I tell you, I was so. Oh, oh, oh. What is it? What is it? I can't stand heights. Oh, everyone. I can't stand heights. <laughs> with your pulse. Will I live? Yes. Probably forever. But also I love you. I love you as a woman, not as a goddess. So stupid in this silly hat. It is not a hat, it is the order of Epifania. Oh, is that what it is? I rather thought it might be the Eiffel Tower. Oh, what are you doing with my Eiffel Tower? I mean, with my order. I'm putting it away. Oh, no. There, I have just put it away. Oh. Jow. Jow. What? What is it? What do you mean, Jow, Jow? From now on, you Jow, as I say. Ciao, ciao, ciao. 
One, two, three, one. 